Good evening and thanks for tuning in. I'm Neville Choi. Tonight we look into what is a developing human resource crisis in the health sector. And Catholic Church-run Divine Word University is the only other higher learning institution outside of the University of Papua New Guinea offering a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery or MBBS program. It's a program that trains students to become doctors. Divine Word University has taken a bold stand on its MBBS program to meet the country's need for more doctors. Divine Word's Dean of the Medicine and Health Sciences Faculty, Dr. Clement Malau, says Divine Word University is well aware of the urgent need for doctors. He spoke to our talk picture journalist, Fabian Hakalitz, in Medang recently. We'll have his views on meeting this urgent doctor shortage a little later on in the show. But first we take a look at the human resource capacity in the health sector. The question posed is, do rural health services lack a sufficient workforce? Papua New Guinea is rich in its cultural diversity with a population of over 7 million from the 800 plus indigenous languages separated by the biodiverse geographical setting. 80% of the population live in rural areas with records showing some of the worst indicators of child maternal mortality rates and common communicable diseases like malaria and tuberculosis. These are indicators for primary health care services to be strengthened. One of the service delivery models is human resources, mainly provided by the government, private sector organizations and church health facilities that are an integral part of the national health system. This brings into question if rural health services lack sufficient health workforce. According to Dr. Clement Malau, who is the Dean of the Medicine and Health Sciences Faculty of Divine Word University, there is a human resource crisis in the health sector. This year Divine Word University introduced its Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery MBBS program, a program that has been heavily criticized with claims that it was rushed and lacks quality. However, Dr. Malau has brushed aside critics calling for support on this program to help address the human resource crisis. Dr. Malau says that the national health system lacks sufficient workforce numbers to improve primary health care, especially in the rural areas. The public demand for doctors and other health workers is high and this demand must be met. I would urge any people that are, I guess, questioning what we are trying to do, to really work with us meaningfully, from the heart, not uh, think about the majority of the people out there. Think about what might happen if we created these doctors that have a heart and the, and the technical qualities to serve our rural communities. Think about the demands that are out there by the people. When you talk about economics and demand and supply forces, you realize that people will advance so quickly. The demand for services will be totally different in 10 years' time. If we are not prepared for that demand, who will provide that to the people? Like a lot of people are overcrowding the hospitals because they want to see doctors. And when you say, oh, so this is something I don't control. I can't physically control myself personally, nor any institution can control. 
the people will determine the market forces for supply of people, quality people out there. The National Health Plan aligned with Vision 2050 and the medium-term development goals has some of the greatest challenges and a critical part is its implementation and its human resource cost. Dr. Malau said Divano University has the right values and is committed to quality and standards. With the necessary infrastructure, this will help provide healthcare professionals with the heart to serve, especially in the rural areas. And that brings into question whether we have thought through the human resource requirements critically. And I, for one, believe that doctors are usually the, called the team leaders of the health sector. Uh, one of my personal commitments is to see how we can get doctors to be trained, not just as intellectuals, but people with the heart. Uh, I guess that's one of my convictions uh, and my personal commitments to see where we can continue helping the health sector develop, uh, develop to be service oriented, develop to be one that's serving everyone in the country. That's equitable. We provide equitable health services, including the financing of health care. So I believe by training the right sort of people with the right values, particularly doctors, we might have a system that is run transparently in an accountable manner for service to the people. That's my personal commitment, but I think it should replicate to those of us who are committed to doing the right thing for the country. One fundamental of this program is the introduction of the professional and Christian ethics that will enable students to serve with their heart and not for treasure or wealth. By in summary is that Divine Way University has all the cadres of workers, critical cadres of workers from environmental health, physiotherapists, um, uh, health managers, um, uh, nurses. Uh, so we make up actually core of a number of human resources that are needed by the health system to operate effectively. So. I have been challenged, we have here the faculty been challenged how we can make them work as a team. We've been given that opportunity to do that. And our challenge here is how we work and massage the people that we train to think as a team. So when they get out of the, the of divine word, they're able to work and portray that uh, teamwork while they're working as workers uh, when they finish. So uh, we're really committed to that. and. All I can say again is we want understanding and mateship, partnership, and we'll work together to create a human resource for the country. Dr. Malau says that Divano University is committed to resolving some of these challenges in the health sector. The Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences is now focused on reviewing all its program specifications with a view on alignment, technical content update, and gathering evidence for appropriate numbers and quality of staff, assets, and financing. Hopefully that will be finished by the end of the year. That is how the university and the university council has committed themselves to ensure that we build the infrastructure that is right for a quality MBBS program. Um, so. Beyond that, we also have done a number of other things that I believe which will lead to the quality. We are now having the PSDs reviewed for all the departments, and we believe the MBBS program, together with what, we'll, uh, what the program will bring, including all the specialist doctors, will add value to all the other programs we have. That includes the current health extension program, uh, physiotherapy program, um, the health management program to a certain extent, uh, the nursing program in Bonapoke, uh, the proposed 
nutrition program if we come down to implementing that. Um, the environmental health program. So we've got significant other programs that are MBBS program together with all its specialist doctors can help uplift the quality. The commitment now is to producing human resources with the right attitude and mindsets that they're able to provide quality healthcare to everyone in Papua New Guinea. You're watching Talk Pixar. Divine Road University's Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery or MBBS is a five-year program aimed to produce doctors with the commitment and clinical competency to serve the country's population. This is in response to inadequate health service delivery to the rural population that is challenged by a lack of doctors in the country. It took Divine Road University 10 years to establish this Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery or MBBS program. According to Dr. Jesse Kuzma, who is the Medicine Head of Department, the MBBS program is a new approach to medical education that looks at implementing all current recommendations and interactive methods to place more responsibility in the student's learning process. This five-year program provides meaningful patient's experience beginning with the foundation year of biomedical sciences and continues with the transition to clinical practice. Students who wish to undergo this training must have a GPA of 3.5. The small dimension, small time is increasing over the years. This early exposure is recommended by world standards, by World Federation of medical education. It motivates students and gives them satisfaction of, of being involved and, and getting used to clinical environment. Second, second characteristic of our program is that we do a lot of integrated units. Uh, for instance, we adopted system teaching. That's, that's why when we look only at titles of, the, of our units, you won't see that we really teach for a prolonged time anatomy and physiology, but we teach in integrated way. we integrating these sciences to teach the whole systems. Uh, it's called horizontal integration. We also in implement in early vertical integration. So we try to find at least some basic links to the clinical and, and pathological reference from, from the sciences that will motivate students and will teach them to associate things or to apply sciences to clinical thinking and clinical problem solving. Our program is also five years. So one year, almost one year, fourth year of, of, the, of the program is committed to rural placement. The students will be placed in district hospitals. Uh, you, you have to understand that we are at the beginning of the path. So we are on learning curve, we are in the process of building capacity, of human resource capacity, we are in the process of recruiting staff, but I can assure you in terms of quality that for this year we have all highly qualified teachers to, to, to provide this, to teach science units for this year and gradually we'll be recruiting other specialists looking first for national market and, and if, if, if uh, adequately qualified candidates could be found in, in, in within the country we look internationally. Divine Road University has affiliations and stakeholders like the National Health Department, Medical Board of PNG and others which include Italy's Frederico II University School of Medicine, one of the oldest medical schools in the world, offering the MBBS program in line with World Federation for Medical Education Standards. The MBBS program prepares graduates who are competent and confident 
and accountable for the ethical and professional standards as health professionals. Facilities like that of the Heart of Mary at Alexis Afan in Medang will be used by MBBA students as part of their training. Uh, and as finalizing agreement with the hospital to involve more uh, uh, specialist doctors from Modilon Hospital. At the moment, they are reviewing a curriculum document and, and we're waiting for their feedback. So we are open for cooperation with all people that care for quality of a program and care for training qualified, competent health workers for PNG. Uh, another characteristic issue is that we are Christian university, so we embed a student with Christian values, with professional integrity, and we sensitize them to, to possibly work in most disadvantaged areas, it means in rural areas of PNG. For Sister Maria Christina Lotsemi, as a health manager, it's a great hope because with more doctors, this will improve basic primary health care. Yeah, from the side of uh, people here in the community, they have to agree and to be open for this uh, big uh, um, development that will come up and to also for the safety and the well-being of the doctors coming in and for the development that will take place. I think the community need to be aware and they have to be supportive of this. And regarding fund, uh, government can help or the university is going to invest. That is, we are open. And, uh... The first batch of 29 students have been enrolled in the MBBS program. Kevin Sankey is one of the pioneers who, after his many years of working in the health sector, decided to join the program for he is very optimistic on the need for more doctors to serve in rural areas of the country. How do we reach out and cover that main, main purpose of, let's say, the national health purpose of providing the basic primary health to everybody? How do we cover that basic? That's the question I will. And I'm appealing in that sense of question that I have in heart that we need people and we need to work first and we really need doctors to cover the population. And everything, you can have the facilities, you can have everything, but it's a human resource that we need. So I'm appealing to the, the country as a whole that this is a fortunate that we have another medical school in Divine World. It was a privilege studying at Divine World University where values for holistic approach are taught that shapes a human person to be ethically considerable in life. We're giving a, a, an holistic approach that is covering everything that we lack. Most, most, most graduates that uh, go out and do this, you, you talk about the skills. We have the basic facilities here. Yeah, probably the, everything we, in the facility side, we have it there. And as well as the moral ethical side of it, the complete person should have an holistic approach is here. You're watching Talk Pixar. The National Health Department is supportive for the need to train more doctors in Papua New Guinea. Health Secretary Pascal Kase says the department will assist Divine Red University to ensure that its MBBS program is achievable. While there are still some processes to be completed for the program to fully function, Mr. Kase says that the critical need must be supported, and that is to move forward with training enough doctors for our people. According to the World Bank report, training capacity in Papua New Guinea has weakened considerably over the last 10 to 15 years. The ability to train more and more doctors has declined because of the less resources invested in training. Rural healthcare is especially threatened with high child maternal deaths because of the human resource crisis. The National Health Department has welcomed the opportunity offered by the Vanuatu University to train more doctors. Secretary Kase said discussions have been ongoing to support this Bachelor of Medicine 
Bachelor of Surgery or MBBS program that will help address this area of critical need. Mr. Kasser said the National Health Department was aware of the requirements to meet the standard and quality of delivery. For us in the health department, we would want more health workers. So opportunities such as offered by the Diwan World University is very much welcome. But uh, there are requirements for start, such institutions that need to be fulfilled in order to, uh, to establish such a, a training institution. So that our uh, experts will advise us so that we'll take a decision. But for us as a department, we do need the, the services of more doctors and more nurses to come into the workforce. So uh, I think the, uh, there's a lot of potential for the, the, the institution that is being proposed by the Divine World uh, University Management and uh, we will be considering their proposal uh, next week on the 10th of, uh, on, of May and then a decision will be made. But I understand that uh, the process has already begun at the Diwan World University for training of a uh, uh, new uh, medical officer, young medical officers. However, with the 40 doctors graduating every year from the medical school of the University of Papua New Guinea, this figure is insufficient and still cannot cater for PNG's increasing population. From the reports that we, and uh, updates that we are getting from the medical schools, school is that uh, we, we they, our university medical school produce about 40, 40, 40 plus students every year. And again, that's not taking into account our requirement and our population. That, that is not sufficient. Uh, because not all of that will be absorbed into the public health system. That others go to other overseas country or into the private sector. And so, uh, that number, I think they, the, the school is keen to, to, to increase that number, but again, it comes well down to resources and then the capacity that uh, our university has. So I will receive the, the details of whatever the challenges that, that the school has to, to, to discuss those on, the, on their own. But uh, as far as we are concerned, that we, we still need more numbers to be graduated by the school. Mr. Kasser said the health department is aware of the issues faced by this higher learning institutions and will continue to assist them to improve capacity. There will be a submission that will be made by the One World University and then technical experts. We, are, we, we, are, we will be inviting experts from even abroad to come and help the health department and the medical board to, uh, to make decisions. We know that establishing a new university, especially a school of medicine, is not an easy thing. It will cost a lot of money. But we won't expect uh, the one word to put everything in place in the same year. It will take time before we build up the capacity. So we will be reasonable not to expect too much, but at least some minimum requirements that has to be met in order for the school to start now. And then over a period of five years, 10 years, 20 years, the school can be built up with other requirements that are, are so advised by the technical experts that we will be putting together. The workforce crisis in Papua New Guinea in terms of health service delivery has pushed the National Health Department to put in place a human resource workforce policy as part of the national government's direction. This is an urgent plan to address the critical workforce shortage. Immediate actions will be taken by the National Health Department and its partners to address the shortages. With the national government support, CASA says funds have been allocated to rehabilitate medical institutions. So one of the uh, factors is the workforce shortages. We can increase our schools or we can increase our medicines or others, but if we don't have workers, how do those medicines get admi administered to our patients? So that's why workforce is very important, and especially at this time when we have a policy on free health care, our people would very much be attending to health services. But are there workers there to attend to the needs of our people? There are health workers, but not in sufficient in numbers. That people will people have to wait in queues because of our insufficient numbers. So, but ideally, we, with uh, our population, we need more than uh, what we have at the moment. We acknowledge that there are different ways, different methods of providing medical educations and even World Federation for Medical Education doesn't specify particular methods to be chosen. They accept all methods. The standards about something well, how well we 
implement, how, how well we do a teaching, how much our students learn, how, how, what, what capacities and skills they get, and it can be achieved with different methods. Uh, so I also appeal for open, open-mindedness of, of those who criticize something that is new. Th that's true, what I mentioned. We are at the beginning of the path. We are building capacity. We don't have all human resources, all infrastructure in place yet. But we have planned for that and we are actively working to implement this plan and to make sure that our graduates have required capacity for both for PNG standard and they have some global standards, some international standard, basic standard, medical standards that they would be able to work both in PNG even in, in internationally. And that's all we have for you tonight on Talk Pixel. We hope you enjoyed the program. Until we do this again next Sunday, I'm Neville Choi. Good night. <laughs>